today I'm going to show you how to make your own agar plates from the Escarpment Labs dry agar products. Today I'm using the WLN Nutrient Agar, uh, otherwise known as WLN. Really great all-purpose medium to check for yeast cross-contamination. Um, you can also add cyclohexamide to it. Turns that into WLD, which is great to screen for wild yeast like Britannomyces. Really great, and you can make uh, your own agar plates in your brewery uh, using a lot of really common low-cost equipment. So to do this, you're gonna require something to mix your agar in. Here, I'm just using a simple mason jar. You're gonna need some distilled water. So I have a container here of distilled water. You're gonna need some sterile Petri dishes. So you can buy these pre-sterilized um, from scientific suppliers or from Amazon, things like that. You're gonna need a stir bar, and that's gonna go into your container. You're gonna need a stir plate. I've just got an old scientific stir plate here, um, but any like home brew her stir plate will do just fine. Uh, we need a device to sterilize in. So here we're actually just using a small model Instant Pot. If you have the bigger Instant Pot, even better, but this one's gonna work great. You of course need your agar medium as well. So this is all pre-mixed. Comes with instructions, everything ready to go. And then uh, if you like, you can also have some foil that you can use to cover up. Um, you can also have this autoclave indicator tape that will turn dark um, when it's been heated and pressurized. That's all it takes, so let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna weigh our ingredients. Um, I'm gonna start with our water. So we're gonna do here. And I'm just gonna do uh, just a quarter batch. So a normal batch would be one liter. That'll make about two stacks of plates. I'm gonna make about 250 milliliters. That's gonna give me about a half stack of plates. Just enough for what I need this week. So I'm gonna weigh out 250 grams of water. It's okay if we're off by a few grams. And then what we'll do is we're gonna zero that and then in this case, we need 80 grams for one liter, so we know we need 20 grams for that quarter liter. So I'm going to use a spoon to weigh that out. Now when we're making agar, we're really just cooking for microbes. We have to think of it that way. We're cooking up some tasty treats that our microbes are gonna want to eat. So that's there. I'm gonna give that just a little bit of a mix with the spoon. And you can see, as it starts to dissolve, you can see the dye in the WLN. That's bromocresol green. It's a really cool pH indicator. So when things grow on that agar plate, when microbes grow on that agar plate, uh, it's actually gonna change color according to the pH. It turns yellow when the pH drops. It stays this really bright, vibrant blue if the pH does not drop. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on that stir plate and we're just gonna stir it up on that stir plate. We wanna see that fully dissolve before we start to sterilize it. Now these products are pre-mixed, so you already have agar in here. You already have all of the ingredients you need to make these uh, common brewing industry quality control media. So you don't need to add anything else. The only case where you would add anything else to the WLN is if you're adding cyclohexamide, which turns it into WLD. It stops regular yeast from growing, but it helps to select for yeasts like Britannomyces. So if you're checking your barrel aged beers for Britannomyces contaminations, um, that's a great option for you. All right, so that's good and mixed up. I'm going to add some foil over the top. I'm gonna put it in this Instant Pot with any autoclave, and really I'm gonna consider an Instant Pot to be pretty close. Doesn't quite get to the same pressure. Uh, these usually get to about 12 or 13 PSI, where an autoclave will get to 15. But for the purpose of most of our standard uh, brewing laboratory growth media, it's gonna work okay, and we're gonna have a way to check and make sure that our plates are clean before we use them. One key thing with autoclaves is because it works on the principle of creating steam and pressure to sterilize everything that's inside. 
you always want to make sure that you have some liquid in the bottom of your container. Uh, so for example in here, I have some water in the bottom and it'll tell you a min and max usually. And then we just want to place our uh, agar on the inside. And then we can go ahead, we can seal that up. And you got a few options in terms of the settings. In general, what we want to do is sterilize the agar for somewhere between 20 to 30 minutes. It does depend on the individual type of agar. So in this case, I'm gonna select the ultra setting that gives us 30 minutes. And I'm gonna hit start. And that's it, we're gonna let that run. Uh, this setting seems to be pre-programmed to uh, take this up to sterilization, close to sterilization temperatures and pressures for 30 minutes and then it's going to vent and keep warm, which is great. Just in case we have to walk away, there's something else going on in the brewery. Uh, this gives us a little bit of time and flexibility to come back, take our, our agar out and pour our plates. Okay, so we've let that go through the full cycle, then cooled down, there's no pressure, so we should be able to take that lid off no problem. There we go. Now this is gonna be very hot, so we just wanna make sure that we protect our hand. I'm gonna take that out so we can see. We have our autoclaved agar, and then next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that onto this stir plate. I'm gonna set that up just to spin very, very gently. We do not want to get any bubbles in there. We want the surface of that agar to just sort of be moving around a little bit. Now we want that to keep stirring probably for about 10, 15 minutes. We want it to cool down to the point where it's safe for us to touch. We need to be able to lift up that jar of agar. Typically that's when it's in about the 50 Celsius uh, range. Okay, so the agar is now cool enough to handle. I've got my Bunsen burner here. I've also got my agar uh, petri dishes. And I've already sanitized my work area with isopropanol or any other sanitizer. So when we're pouring these plates, we always want to make sure that the bottom side is down. It has a lid and it also has a bottom. And then different people have different ways of doing this. I like going about four or five plates at a time. I just kind of work from right to left or left to right. And our agar is still nice and hot. We don't want it to get too cool because if it gets too cool, it will start to solidify. So next step is light up our Bunsen burner. That's gonna help us to get a sanitary work area. You also need to make sure that your work area is draft free. So I'm gonna pour the first round of plates. I'm gonna to try to keep everything within a foot of this flame, just to make sure that there's nothing floating in and landing in our agar from the outside environment. We've got our agar, we've got our dishes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift these up by the bottom top lid, so we can actually see that bottom petri dish there. I'm just gonna pour it until it's just covering that surface. And then I'm going to repeat for the other plates in the stack. Now, make sure you take your time if this is your first time doing this. So you can see that one's a little bit low. I can top it up a little bit. So the plates should look about half filled. So when the plates are fully solidified, what you want to do is you want to store them bottom side up. This helps prevent any condensation from getting onto the surface of the agar because there will be some condensation when those plates uh, solidify. I also do recommend holding these at room temperature for one or two days after pouring. Just in case there has been any contamination, you'll be able to start seeing some microbial growth at that point. 
Last thing you want is a contaminated agar plate. And then to put them away, usually what I'll do is flip them over, put them back in that sleeve. And then when we store them, we wanna store them facing uh, with the agar side up, um, agar side down rather, um, so that any condensation doesn't get on the surface of that agar. And then we just wanna seal it up and we're good to go. That is your own homemade agar plates.